I know that um, my brain is more beautiful than my body. Huh? Tr truly. No. Yes. Next John. question. You know, you're supposed to agree with me that yes. My oh, do you want? Yes. My brain then yes. is. Do you think? You think like my brain? I don't know. Less I don't know if this was a trick question yeah. because if I said no, your body, like would would I? If if I didn't say your body, would you get mad? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I do. So whatever you think, I love. <laughs> And welcome, welcome back, back to, to Give It To Me Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I'm John. And we're your gracious, 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 gracious hosts. hosts. How you doing, John? I'm I'm okay. Why are you just okay? I don't know. I just sat down. I feel like I just like tweaked my back a little bit. What Again, were you doing? Fr from yeah. episode one, I fucking hate these chairs. We Also, you got a comment that you cut me off, by the way. I just want to bring that up. Did I just up. do it again? Well, I don't, I, I don't know. We're just, we always just cut each other I off. I think there's like a war going on between our like listeners because some are on my side and some are on your like side. Like you have people who love you and are like, fuck you, Alex. You cut John off all the time. And then there's people who like me. <laughs> they're, and they're like, like let her speak, John. Yeah, God damn it. That's true. You know, it's okay though. You know, someone, it's a battle. someone commented on one of our videos recently and said, my God, she's hideous. And no. um, yeah, so I did them the favor and I blocked them, not because my feelings were hurt, <laughs> even though so they, they don't were have hurt. to ever see. Your but face yeah, again. I was like, no, well, now you don't ever have to see my face again, and that's on kindness. I did that for them. That's on so, God. That's what I feel like you're about to say. That's on God. I'm just so nice. And I'm like, I'll do this for you. Instead of you blocking me and unfollowing me, I'll do it for you. Now you never have to look at my face. Oh, <laughs> uh, but whatever. Who cares? You know? I mean, that's what we get for um, putting our faces out there. You know, people have the freedom to call us hideous. Now I, now I know why you didn't want to shoot this morning. Well, you were like, Alex, we I, just woke up. And you're like, let's just shoot the podcast now. I'm like, we all, no. We have different energy levels. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's three o'clock now. I'm like, it's because of the coffee intake. It's definitely our coffee intake. I'm like ramped up in the morning. That's true. Now it's like the hour of wine. So we just like change. Cheers. To Prosecco. Oh, wait, no. This is rosé. Rosé all day. With our melted ice cube. We've also gone from being cold as balls in here it's to so now hot. hot as balls. I guess, what is it? It's not cold as balls. What would it be? Like cold as... Ice? Well, yes. It's cold but as like ice. cold as... I don't know. What do people say? It's cold as... Cold the as snowman's dick. Sure. That's what it is. We're never satisfied. Typical. Now it's too exactly. hot. Exactly. Like no matter what, we're gonna complain. If it's too hot, it's too cold. It really is so hot outside. What what is your ideal time to shoot the podcast? Oh, I thought you were gonna say my ideal temperature. I was gonna say probably like 72. Oh, mine's 69. <laughs> no, seriously. That's what the temperature for our thermostat is 69 is the best temp. Room temp. What would you put? Would, also, you sleep with your sweatshirt on. I don't know I why know, you do I that. Like, and it's all to be like cozy. You're not cozy. You're you're like a heater, space heater. I sixty nine is too cold. I think seventy two is like. Some perfect. guy was on Joe Rogan. He was talking about like your bot, your brain, or your head has to drop down like two degrees or something to have like really good sleep. So it's like that's you want to sleep like. That's why you should have in like colder weather. A cold pillow. We also have one of those and it doesn't stay cold. I don't know. It's pretty cold if you feel that versus like the rest of the yes. bed. But anyways, so what? when's your ideal time to like shoot the podcast? If you oh, I mean, I, I feel as much as I like to say like I'm a morning person, creativity for me doesn't really spark until late at night. Like I always get ideas later, later at night, but I don't think that I would want to shoot the pod then. I don't know. Oh, so it's whatever Alex wants to do. It's, I don't, it's no, basically it's what we're coming John. at. We shoot whenever we have the we time. Should, we should try to day. shoot it in the morning. Just put a hat on if you're like, if you'll, no, because people I will think hurt you're my feelings way. and call me hideous. We could just block them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can true. you imagine what it would be like with like three cups of coffee in us? Because right now- But you can drink coffee at any time of day. I know, but I don't want to drink that much coffee. Then don't drink it until later. Or no, take an I need it. Shot. I need it in the morning. I don't know, but what? anyway. So, yeah, back to my my back. I just tweaked it sitting down in this fucking chair. I don't know. How people work out like so hard every day at the gym. Like I go in there, I'm like, 
Whoa, be careful. <laughs> be careful. It's also because you're old now. You have to be careful. Dude, there's there's beasts that are like But you've 40. had back issues, you know? I like know. when you have pre-existing problems, you can't just do whatever you want. Having um, like herniated discs or bulging discs is like so common. If you played any contact sport. Then you got kicked in the back. I got kicked in the back. I think it was more from therapy. I'm trying to think. Like I broke a lot of bones as a kid and like fell on my face a lot. Like my tooth is fake. But I don't think that anything has like stuck with me really that long. I mean, my hernia is still out, but, right. um, but anyway, I, <laughs> I think that maybe for you, a better option instead of going to the gym would be playing with the meta quest. <laughs> no, no, those that, moves, those moves with the lightsabers. No, guys. We're like, so for John, for Christmas, I got John, what is it called? The Oculus? Is yeah, that what it's called? I, I, think so. I got John this Oculus because a year ago for his birthday, we did a virtual reality experience in sick. LA and it was so fucking cool that I was like, I need to get John this for his, for Christmas. So we got it, but we haven't opened it up. It's been how many months since Christmas? So yesterday, John was playing Call of Duty and I was like, let me play video games with you. And he said, no fuck you alex go play your own video okay. games i didn't say that yeah, you basically said that this is how so <laughs> no now i'm gonna cut you off this is exactly alex is like you want to play games like when you hang out with me i'm like all right let's hang out and she's like well let's, let's get the oculus i'm like okay so i like set it up for her and then i sat there and watched her play for an hour i you sat said, there in a chair you and said watched you were going her to play call of duty in an hour so our hour of hangout time was alex <laughs> playing this resident evil game and i just hear she just screams she's like how do i open the door how do i open the door the amount of times I had to like take off the headset and help have John get me to like the next level. Um, That's a good workout tool though. But that game, when we were playing the lightsaber thing, I don't think I've laughed that hard. Like, because you look, you when you're in it, you feel like you're in this actual like reality, like this new world. But then when you're watching someone play, they look so dumb. I know. So watching you play, I couldn't. I couldn't keep it together. I was it laughing for like it's a whole hour. It's kind of it dangerous, though. It's kind of like new age dance dance revolution. Did you ever play that? I, I yeah, not really. But I loved DDR. I feel like the shit though, like because mm, I was like on beat. Uh, 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 you're actually uh, pretty good. Thank you. That's the only thing that I could say confidently. That they need you're to put a fan better at me that in it in. though. Wait, what? They need to put a fan like in the Oculus. Oh, Alex and I were taking hot. turns. I'm like peeling it off my face, like wiping it, giving it to her. But that's a good workout. Anyways. So the weather is good. The vibes are good. Right. We ate a really good hamburger the other day. We did. We have a lizard problem. We got we another do. lizard in our house. I don't know another where the one. fuck they're coming from. Did you know that like, I don't know if it's a gecko, but like whatever lizards are like basking in the sun, they're like doing push-ups like this. <laughs> no. Like they run Show into me. the sun. <laughs> No, that's exactly what they look like, John. I'm not, I'll show you a video because I took one before. Like they have their little paws like this. And this is what they do. <laughs> that's like 30. When I used to go to the beach 31. in North Carolina and we would go fishing, they have these like crabs that only have one arm. I don't know what they're called. They'd go skid, skid, skid. And then one arm is smaller. Smaller. And then they have this. Are they the blue? Uh, I don't remember blue what they're crabs? called. I don't know. But I think you use them to like go fish, but then they have like one. <laughs> one big one sticking out of the one water. arm like this and then one little arm i don't know what <laughs> i was supposed to like move <laughs> <laughs> you'd be a good like crab if you were in an animated movie like you would be uh sebastian in... i'd be sebastian oh for sure yeah, yeah. miserable yeah or just like you're always concerned like sebastian oh like, yes Ariel, where are you where That'd are you going you. Yeah. what you doing yeah <laughs> All right. Let's Should get into it. Our yeah, let's just now? get into it. So, Alex, let's talk about our sponsor for today. It is Pretty Boy. And it's the lotion I put on my face after I shave. I swear, it's like the best aftershave lotion I use. It is nice. And it smells great, too. Yeah, Sometimes I steal it from John. It's really good for your skin, seriously. So, I'm excited to finally have one of my favorite brands, Pretty Boy, sponsor our podcast. Alex has always tried getting me on skincare, but every time she dragged me into the bathroom after seven steps and multiple layers of goop on my face, I felt like I was caked in a greasy mass. Pretty Boy is super lightweight. I forget it's even on my face and extremely simple. One product targets all the skin concerns I have, and it's made with high quality ingredients. 
All right, but ladies, seriously, you need to get your guy pretty boy. They went all in on the right ingredients that actually provide results. And it's got such a nice texture. Sometimes I even steal John's pretty boy for myself because it's so lightweight. Perfect for everyday wear. Okay, but I won't steal it from you, actually. I have so much of my own skincare. But this is something that he actually uses and he actually loves. It's the one product I can't live without these days. You guys need to try it ASAP. We're partnering with them to get you a discount code on your first order. Go to YoPrettyBoy.com or use the link in our link tree and use our code GITMS15. That's GITMS15 for 15% off your first order. And back to our questions. I just became friends with someone and we decided to go on a couple's date for fun. The entire trip, my friend kept belittling her boyfriend, which was super uncomfortable. I don't know how to go about this. Do I bring it up to her or just let it be? We also work together, so I don't want to put my opinion somewhere where it's not wanted. Depends how close you are to each other. Like, how good of friends are you? Yeah. But then you also work together. We literally, like, are really close friends. This is kind of like a game we play, our close friends. Like, we're <laughs> yeah. always, either Alex and I are arguing, or they're arguing, and then we, while they're arguing, we'll look at each other and go, we're, we're winning. winning. Yeah. And then it just kind of like, it kind of stops the it argument. It kind of like a helps bit. the mood. Yeah. Cause like, and then if John and I are arguing, they'll be like, oh, babe, we're winning. We're winning today. And then every time we just are like, fuck, like it kind of sets you back. But I think this is different than arguing. She's saying that her friend is belittling, like, so probably taking digs. It's not necessarily like, a debate or yeah, something like an argument. And I've had friends like this before too, like certain situations. And I think to, to your point, it does depend how close you are with your friend, which right now it sounds like you just became friends with them. Cause generally I would call out my friend and again, a fun joking way and just be like, cause you're bringing awareness. Yeah. yeah. And just being like, don't talk to him like that. But it just depends if you want to like get involved in how close you guys are or not. I would say something in a joking way, but that way it's kind of bringing awareness to them that, that, you know, they're making other people uncomfortable. Yeah. You're, so you're like the king of that. Like if you feel like the vibe is off between something, you're like, okay, verbal hand grenade. Like you call people out for that all well, the time. Well, like don't make, if you're in a setting with other people, like don't kill my vibe. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. Like go yeah. somewhere else. Like that's so inconsiderate. If you're going to like be a dick and just like ruin everyone else's time. Cause it is. Whether you're talking to someone else or not, be aware of your environment and where you're at. But I wouldn't, unless you were still like hanging out with them, I don't know that I would bring it up afterwards. Um, I mean, do you guys hang out a lot? Because then then that would get annoying if it's I, like a one-off. Well, of course it could get annoying, but I just think like that's a relationship issue between them. You know, like if it's bothering her boyfriend that he's belittle, belittling her, that's on him to address she's that. she's belittling him. Right. Yeah. So if I were you, you guys work together it's uncomfortable. I would call it out if like you feel comfortable calling it out like while it's happening. But afterwards, I don't know that I would bring Not it up. Not afterwards, no. I'd say like in the moment, be like, hey. Yeah, but. Shut the fuck up. Everyone <laughs> everyone argues though, but right. I mean, belittling is just that's, disrespectful. That's a little different, yeah. yeah. Next question. I'm addicted to my phone at the point where it's negatively impacting my life. I wake up, start scrolling, and get sucked into the screen. Helpful tips? I mean, Having your phone next to you at night is is bad. Like I like what you're starting to do. Like if you want to wake up in the morning and it's more for your alarm, but right. it's still the same thing for like getting off your phone. Cause mm-hmm. you're not going to get out of bed. No. And to scroll. Go look at your phone. Like I, I know that like if my phone, if I'm charging it across the room, like I'm saying good night to my phone. It, <laughs> yeah, basically it is, it is so addicting, especially the algorithms know exactly what you want. Like you can get into bed at nine o'clock and stay scrolling for an hour and a half. It's almost like we're using, so yeah, we'll be like, all right, we're done with our show. We're like, now oh, we're going to go to our room yes. and have more screen time. Yeah. There's like a skit in that. It's like screen to screen to screen to screen, work screen, fun screen, enjoyable screen, this screen. You guys are watching us on the screen. Um, some of you, or you're listening to us in your car or at the gym, who knows? But anyway, Tips for me that have helped physical separation from your phone, literally, or setting timers of like doing a task. So like if I'm supposed to be working and I don't want to be distracted by my phone, I will put a 50 minute timer on my phone so that I work for 50 minutes and then I get a 10 minute break and then I could do whatever in that break. I get a snack, I get up, I stretch, I scroll. And then after that 10 minutes, I start another 50 minute timer and then I do it again. Um, I think just replacing that habit with other things, like once you notice yourself like clicking on it, 
pick up a book, go clean your room. Like just, you just have to start. Well, th- this is for at night for them. This is like 3 a.m. or something. Like they're no, she's, they said, I wake up and get sucked into the screen. Oh, it's like, not like wake up in the middle phone. of the night. It's just as soon as they I'm wake up. I'm addicted to my phone at the point it's negatively impacting my life. Oh. I wake up and get sucked into the screen. Also, you know that you could like set timers on your phone for certain apps. Isn't it crazy how John can't give you tips because he's also addicted to his phone. Me, mm, you're on your phone you're all addicted. the time. You're on your phone all the time. Not as much as you. You're the true influencer. Like I'm. Uh, okay. You are. You are. You're getting all the behind the scenes. I took a photo of the fucking pizza I made the other day. God forbid I posted it on. You posted this. it for at us at the gym today. I was proud of you, dude. Alex almost fucking squatted 205 today. I've done it before. I know, but, but you haven't done it in a while. I know. She's you, a beast. It's crazy how much like you lose your strength know, if you don't use it. Anyway, I just think that replacing your phone with other things when you notice setting timers it's just gonna it's it's about like setting new habits setting new habit setting new habits and then physical separation from it next question alex how did you gain all your confidence to be you i'm 27 and i'm so concerned to be myself i'm awkward shy and withdraw from friendships because i'm afraid they won't like me um if your friends don't like you for being you they're not your friends um (laughs) But for me, I think like what helped me gain the most confidence was doing things outside of my comfort zone, like being brave and doing, are you listening? Like you keep, you keep fidgeting around. I'm fidgeting because my back hurts, but I'm, yeah, I was looking at the mic as. Like it's so hard talking to someone who's like literally not paying attention. I'm I'm paying attention. You're like, this is, this question didn't involve me, so I'm (laughs) not going to listen. No, no, I was, because I feel like I hate this chair. I'm sitting so low that the mic. Is literally like then sit up straight, but I can't get the mic any lower. So now I'm like, also like, look where I'm sitting. Like, this is so John, impractical. Like, Alex, look at the point of the then table. We could it's sit just next to each other, digging into our chest. We could sit next to each other. We look, need a round table. This is temporary. This is temporary. I'm ready. This white wall is temporary. Everyone, for the fifteenth fucking time. Also, we're Alex, yeah. Let's talk about this for a second. <laughs> yeah. We get it. We know this sucks. <laughs> we know. Paint the wall black. We know. <laughs> we get it. Episode. I mean, season one. It was literally a black wall, and then the sign. This isn't working. Also, Alex, you can't relate to this girl because you are such an extrovert. No. Yes, you are. You're friends with no, everyone. No, no. I can see why. Extrovert has nothing to do with being confident. But I'm sure public it's ha- speaking, for example, what John? What? I'm sure it's harder for her because she's an introvert. She didn't make say friends. she's an introvert. What's her uh, personality traits? What does that say? She said I'm awkward and I'm shy. Okay. That is okay. Like I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm saying she's an introvert, so it's a lot harder for introverts to probably make friends unless you're part of like some sort of online chat group of like things that you like to do. John, that is literally so false. Like with that, it's just that you have like your close circle of people. Like I'm awkward and shy with people I don't fucking know. Like I'm not gonna again, it took me so long to get to a place where I was comfortable going up to someone and saying hi. Like, when did that, or when? even public speaking for fucking get about it. When I was in college, I had to take shots before doing public speaking because I was so nervous. I hated public speaking. I think that's anyone though. Public speaking is horrible. Okay, but just anything. Like, I just think that there's certain things that, like, I probably came off as a confident person because of like you think my personality but like that has nothing to do with just confidence in general like shyness and confidence like don't have you're giving me side eye like she should have asked me this question oh my god you're just jealous (laughs) that this is my question i just don't see how you can relate to this question then how how do you become more confident? Again, if you before you cut me off, Experiences. I was talking about literally stepping out of my comfort Ex- zone. You gotta, do ex- you gotta have more experience. Oh my god! Oh my god! No, go, no, no, John, you're the expert in this. You go. You yeah, you gotta do new things. You gotta experience new things. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. Roll the tapes. Roll the tapes. <laughs> 
someone's gonna see this clip and be like, mm, divorce. Oh God, fuck that. I know. Oh my God, those comments of people be like, they're not gonna last. Divorce. You're You've single. seen twenty seconds of the whole episode. You don't even know what we're talking about. All right, back to this question. I'm gonna answer this. I hate people. <laughs> The way that I have gained more confidence over the years is doing things that have made me uncomfortable, stepping out of my comfort zone and doing things that I look back on that I thought were scary, like starting my own business, meeting people, reaching out to people. And ultimately, I think realizing that everyone really only cares about themselves. No one is looking at you. No one cares if you are shy or if you're awkward, like... And are you going to regret it in years that you didn't do the brave thing, that you didn't go to this event or go talk to that person for being, you know, because you felt too shy in the moment? Like doing the things that feel uncomfortable are what's worth it. I'm going to butcher this and I don't remember because we talked about this in season one. I think I don't, it's not Churchill. I want to say it was him. It was like a quote. It's like in your 20s, you're so worried about what everyone thinks about you in your thirties. Like you don't care about other people. Like, and then in your sixties, whatever you find out that no one cared about you to begin with or right. something like yeah. what you do, but it's true. It's, it's like, like all in your head. You are so, and I don't mean to say this like as you specifically, but like we as people are so insignificant really that it's like, if you're so worried about what other people think of you, like you're never going to do anything. Like you have to get out of your own way in those situations, like if John and I cared about like the mean comments that we get, people saying that we're going to get divorced or that I'm hideous, even though I blocked that person. Like if I actually let those comments get to me and we listen to the negative self-talk in our brains, but also like the negative people, we wouldn't be doing any of this. You know, we would have just been like cowering in our house, like bored and sad. Like you just have to be your, your biggest Just fan you have yourself. to be your biggest fan be yourself and again like being you is enough you will find your people who love you for you that's well it. well said i agree yeah i mean i just and therapy has helped me get there too <laughs> i call out therapy every episode <laughs> hey it works for you i think true too like being in my 30s just like really but i feel like that's just a cop-out like you could I, be no, no, no. I think like, yourself i think yourself i think everyone says about their 30s is like some of the best times in their life because that's when you realize who you are mm -hmm. and you're so much more confident in yourself i am mm -hmm. i know that in my 30s than i ever was in my 20s so Maybe just wait till you're 30. And I think that you don't have to wait until you're 30. <laughs> I think that you could be confident in who you are. Um, next question. Ready? Mm -hmm. Are you paying attention? How's I'm your back? I'm paying attention. Okay. A couple more of these. I'll be right as rain. What is that? Like, you'll, I'll be good. Is that a saying? Yeah, right as rain. I've never heard of that before. Oh, too bad. <laughs> okay. There was a study conducted. Jump. Pay attention. Pay You're attention. not even looking. I at beg it. There was a study done. <laughs> All right, you were. Wait a minute. How long is this question? It's a short one. This is the last. Can, can I read it? No, this is no. This is the last quickie. You could read the question. The other questions. Okay. Even though, like, there's red lines under all these, John. Like, I just want to read. You I didn't need to edit read any of these. I need to read one of these questions because somebody commented and goes, "I love you guys." But I just cannot focus when John reads a question or like I can't understand anything. So like I need to like put a little like expression. I think it. it's just like you don't see punctuation. So if there is like a period or a comma, you uh, just probably. see letters and words and you're like, wow, women tend to find men up similar. It, I'm dyslexic. Know. I don't know what to tell you. That's literally nothing to do Am with it. I okay, next question. <laughs> there was a study conducted that says that men for all ages find women in their early 20s most attractive, while women tend to find men of their similar age attractive. This is kind of depressing for females. Can I get both John and Alex's opinions on this? Does this scare you for the future? I mean, I'm, I'm not 40 yet. I'm not in my 40s. Okay, but I'm, I'm not young. in my 20s. Are you more attracted to women I in think their 20s? Okay, so uh, like, let's, do you know Sydney Sweeney? No. Okay. Is, um, is that the one who plays Wednesday? No, that's Jenna Ortega. Sydney Sweeney's in Euphoria. She's got Fuck that boobs. show. I swear, like, you, 
people love, they love this love show. show. How how does anyone relate to that show? I'm like, these people were like in their late twenties playing high schoolers. I'm like, I never no one nobody looked like that. Okay, in high well school. who's in their twenties? Like who's an actress in their twenties that I can think of? Like Oh, what about that? the eleven? She's eighteen. That'd be creepy if you well, no, I guess she's of age now, so who's in their twenties? Okay, well, sure, let's do her. She's almost 20. Nah, that's weird. What about the one who <laughs> plays Wednesday then? How old is she? She's, I don't think, 20 either. She's in her 30s? No, I think she's only like 19. Why do they have to be 20? Just in their 20s. In their 20s, yeah. So like Zendaya. She, Zendaya who the fuck Zendaya. is that? <laughs> oh, Tom Holland's girlfriend. Yes. I think that's how you say her name. She is in her 20s versus like J-Lo. <sighs> Come on, J-Lo. Okay, so... I mean, J Lo is like a freak of nature, though. What did uh, Ben Affleck just did something? And he was talking. And he's like, okay, I, like, I work out, Kate but I don't have a body of a twenty year old. Like, Kate Beckinsale, or whatever. Honestly, age, true. Like, I think what's annoying about society is again that like age is inevitable. We're all gonna get fo- old. We're all. Gonna- Kobe's just stretching. It distracted me. Kobe, this is the first time Kobe we allowed Kobe in here, and he's being such a good boy right now, he just is. laying there. But he knows I will launch him out of this room <laughs> he's if he starts right in the middle of us. I he's know. so cute. Okay, keep um, going. Age, aging is inevitable, and I think that this question of you know men always being in their prime, the older that they get, and women, you're like, mm-hmm, yes. I didn't say that. I just think that. We need to get to a place where we accept that, like, we're all going to get old and wrinkly. Who's not and- accepting it? No, I, th- I just, just think I think it's just they're just saying like men look better when they get older. Which no, no, no. Maybe <laughs> they do. Clearly not what she's saying. This study <laughs> says that women and their t- women find older men men their age attractive, and men find younger women attractive. I think it's more a maturity thing. I bet you women like men that are older because they're more mature. Or their age, right? Because they're more mature. Whatever. The older they are, yeah. Yeah. Sh- I think, right. I think that in, in, especially like entertainment, like everyone loves to bring up, what's his name? Leonardo DiCaprio, dating younger women. And I have a theory, which is probably not a hot take, but it's because women who are his age are too intelligent for him. You know what I mean? Like, I you think can't that- say it. You don't fucking know him. Do you know him personally? That's what I'm saying. Do you like, know his IQ? John, gee, I'm just I'm just saying that I think Have you think seen The Revenant? He likes it is a it is a person who wants to be in control. Like I just think someone who is attracted to someone 35 years younger than them, something's weird there, John. If you're 50 and you're and He's you're, just he's just like I think he's just stuck in the Prime. No, he's probably having like a little, little crisis, kind of. You of know, of course. So I'm saying, like, he's not mentally well. Th- what? You're, I know. I'm just saying, you're like, just saying you know, he's you're like, he's in a new stage of his life, and he's got to kind of work that out. John, you're literally just trying to say nice things because you want to be his friend. I love Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I don't, but I'm saying that when this study, like, who, who, if was I can be best of friends study, with Leo. And if I could be best friends with Miles Teller. Okay, we're moving on. Who, I think this study Miles, is, was, I know you, you live close to us. <laughs> conducted by, maybe not conducted by bad um Are we still talking people. about this? Yeah, no, no, I am. People who were a part of this study, I don't think were um, mature or in healthy mindsets. Like, I, I need to know... What I, the study was. I believe it. No, no, I believe this study I for a fact. But for you... Not for me. Well, why? But like, why are I you like because I'm attracted to strong, independent women. Right. That's why. But I'm I always, saying. but I always have been. I was gr- like, whatever. But I actually know friends who literally didn't want to date someone that was smarter than them, mm-hmm. which is crazy to me. I'm like, why would you want to actually hinder yourself from growth? Like, if I'm gonna have a partner, I want somebody better than me. And like, that's how any successful person is. Like you want to be the dumbest person out of your friend group or whatever. So unfortunate for you, Alex, <laughs> I got you. So like, I'm the dumber one out of the two of us. Don't talk to your, but about yourself like that, John. I'm the smarter one <laughs> in the way that I got you. Okay. <laughs> so there. No, I, I just think again, I don't know who was part of this study, but it just, to me, if a man is like in his, and again, 
whatever. Like generally people are more attractive in their 20s than they are going to be in their 50s or 60s. But it's all relative to like what you're looking at, you know, like. I don't know. There's just so many fucking factors that go into it. Like, it's well, you're not, looking at personality, you're looking at literal right. attractiveness because, you know. But it's not all physical. Physical is only going to get you so far. We've talked about that one bajillion times, but um, it doesn't scare me for the future because... You're married. <laughs> no, Next. not just because I'm married, but because I know that um, my brain is more beautiful than my body. Huh. Tr- truly. No. Yes. Next John. question. You know, you're supposed to agree with me that yes. My oh, do you want? Yes. My brain then yes. Is, do you think, you think like my brain I don't know. I don't know if this was a trick question <laughs> because if I said, no, your body, like would, would I, if, if I didn't say your body, would you get mad? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I do. So whatever you think, I love. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree with me no matter what I say. All right. Do you want to read? You should read the next two questions. You can you could practice your okay, reading. I practice. I'll read the last few. <clears throat> Go, John. Question number one. Sure. Yeah. Or question Q five. No, we're on the main question. <sighs> question one. My boyfriend and I have been in a relationship for seven years. He's planning to propose to me, and I am worried about our relationship in terms of finances. He never shares any fanatical details with me and is very sensitive about having a joint account. He's not a stingy person and spends money accordingly. So I don't know what the big deal is. What's your advice? I'm, oh, fuck. What's your advice? I'm bringing this up and asking that we're more open with our finances if we're to be married. John, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Did you I like. Did I break? I kind of had... started, I started slipping at no, the no, end. No, no, but it was good. Like I was able to like understand exactly what you were saying. Okay. Um, I think that finances are a huge part of a relationship, a a huge fucking part of a relationship, especially this day and age. If you guys are like both working, unless like he truly wants to keep his finances separate from yours, um, people get divorced over financial situations. I mean, Uh, that's one of the top questions that you should be talking about before you get married. Exactly. So also, I I'm glad like, you answered first because I was so focused on reading the question that I honestly don't remember anything I read besides something about finances. It's so. just that she's in a... I'll, I'll give you the clip notes okay, okay, again, good. even though I listened to the I question. I know. I'm not listening. I'm trying to focus on reading it. So you have Maybe you have ADD, John. I don't know. Maybe. Um, She's in a relationship. Talking about finances. Yeah. yeah her boyfriend just doesn't want to... Or right. fiance. Shit. Fuck. I don't remember. Why'd you close the laptop? I didn't know, you if, the, I didn't use, know if I was blocking no, the camera. No, you have to use it to like reference Was I back. blocking the camera? No. So they've been in a relationship for seven years. He's planning to propose. Okay. I haven't really talked about okay. finances. Okay. He's sensitive about a joint account. Um. So yeah, I think that you have to you have to ask him like what are his reservations with having a conversation about your finances. Um. I think you sh- the bigger question should have been in the beginning: Are you doing a prenup or not? Because true. then that goes from that. Then you can have the que- question about the joint account because if you're going to have a prenup, then it doesn't matter. There's no point in having a joint account unless you're just going to both pull in money. Like you have your separate accounts and then have one joint account that you pull money into for like bills and shit. And cause I mean, again, however, however, everyone has different ways that they want to navigate their relationship and like their finances. Like we've known people who have separate bank accounts. They like pay separate bills and you know, because one makes more money than the other, or they both make equal amounts of money. Um, and you have to do what works for you, but unless you have that conversation, how are you going to know? And I think that that's why bringing it up with him is going to be essential to your success as a couple moving forward, especially into marriage, just being on the same page. Cause it's like, if he doesn't want to have the conversation, that's different than like feeling some type of way about like how you guys are doing finances. You, you have to talk about it to get on the same page. Like you can't just be left in the dark, yeah, especially if you're going to be married. That makes no sense. Finances, politics, kids, kids, religion, religion. I think we're missing one, but like at least those four, like you have to have those conversations beforehand because there's too many questions we've seen or too many like it, that cause argument and stress and strain in a relationship. And those 
are normally the topics. I don't know what the fifth one is. I can't remember. But well, there's, I mean, an endless list like roles in your every, family, your yeah. goals, like where you live, you know, family dynamics. But like those like, are the four big ones. There's tons. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of topics that you have to discuss, but like. Finances is not one that I would leave off of the no, table. No. So next question. I have a child with a one night stand guy. We never had a great relationship. In fact, he never even met our child until years later. He has since started coming around more often and he made tons of comments about how pretty I am and what a great mom I am. He made a move on me and we hooked back up. Only catch, he's recently married. Does that type of behavior signify a complete red flag and should I set boundaries for that to never happen again? Or should I see if he wants to try and actually date for the first time ever? Do you need cliff notes? Uh, what? One night stand. She had a baby with this guy. He was never around. Till recently, he came around. They hook up. But he's married. And she's like, do I pursue this or do I no. cut it off? No, you do not pursue this. Why would you pursue it? Yeah. You're already like, it's already an uphill battle. You have a, you already have like, you guys already have a kid. I just like, it just seems like a lot to have to overcome. I just think too, the fact that he cheated on his recent wife is a red flag. Like you should absolutely oh, see oh, that as that, a red flag. That too, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that too. You're like, yeah, mm, why even jump I definitely this? bypass that. Um, I think that, again, this is up to up to you, whatever you want to do. But personally, if it was this was me, I'd be like, this is a red flag. This can never happen again. And I'm setting a boundary right now that we are no longer able to communicate. I mean, he's he's the father of your child, but he hasn't really been around until years later. Like you owe him nothing. In my opinion, you owe him nothing. You don't. Um, and if he wants to have a relationship with with his child, that's another story. But romantically, you don't know him anything. And I think that unless he divorces his recent wife, this is absolutely a non-negotiable. Like you should not be having or engaging in a relationship with him. But that's my thoughts. No, I 100% agree with you. That's, I wouldn't do it. I just, right now, this guy does not seem like he knows what he wants. I don't feel like he ever has known what he wanted. I mean, he's probably not in a good headspace either if he's like, just think about like him not caring about anyone else's feelings. I mean, the damage he's doing. Like storybook ending would be that he realizes like what he's missed out on, like with you and like leaves his wife currently. But like you can't, he can't have his cake and eat it too. He can't be like, oh, you know, I have my wife on the side and now I get to like sleep with my baby mama who I haven't, you know, been there for for years while she's been raising our children. I just think red flag you have to look out for yourself i would not get back into this also i think you need to look at your own self for hooking up with somebody who's married i think so. i, mean, I yeah, think so no, i think not, so too i mean behavior. let's not bypass what she did i know kind of, i'm thinking about the last question we had like right. the season where i'm like you don't know this person so whatever Remember that when like they had a f yeah and i was like no no but i never respect. said like hook up i was like you could Share your feelings because what this guy should have done is like, even though he's married and he talked to her, be like, I like miss you. If he actually has feelings for you, I'm not saying hook up, but like, express yourself. And if that's how you feel like he shouldn't be married, first off, uh, he, or, abs I mean, clearly right. he should not be married, but I don't, I don't think it's acceptable for her to like fuck up a marriage either. No, I mean, both parties, you you both fucked up here. He's more in the wrong than you are. Like no, what you I, did. You can't even just like you both are in the wrong. I wouldn't say who's no, more wrong. No, he's definitely more in the wrong. Like when you're the married person, like, like, I I don't think it's right for. How are you going to scale who's more wrong? Either way, you both are wrong. Because she's not I'm in just, a relationship. But you still are both are wrong for but doing she, that. But he's more wrong. Okay. You 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 have to know that there is someone who's more wrong. Like, yeah, they're both wrong, but someone's more wrong. Like, you can't get mad. That's like in any situation when it's like a guy cheats on his wife with a girl at the bar. Are you going to, is the wife supposed to get mad equally from the girl at the bar or more in her husband? Like, he's more in the wrong. Maybe this girl at the bar had no idea that this guy was married. I mean, you knew that he was married. So, yeah, like you're wrong, but he's still more wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. Glad we're on the same page. Anyway, ultimate, in conclusion, red flag. 
Don't do it. And as a reminder, this episode is sponsored by Pretty Boy. Hey guys, are you tired of goopy and greasy skincare products that leave you feeling like a shiny disco ball? I am. Well, say hello to Pretty Boy. This brand is super lightweight. You'll forget you even put it on. And don't even get me started on how easy it is one product to tackle all your skin concerns. Say goodbye to aging, fine lines, wrinkles, dry skin, shave irritation, and dark circles. Yes, you heard that one right, one product. And if you're anything like me, you care about what you put on and in your body. Well, Pretty Boy has got you covered there too. High quality ingredients that actually work. So stop messing around with those other skincare products that just leave you feeling gross and get Pretty Boy. Go to YoPrettyBoy.com or use the link in our link tree and use our code GITMS15. That's GITMS15 for 15% off your first order. Trust me, your skin will thank you. And back to our questions. Do you want to read this next question, John? Yeah, let me try. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. You got it. I am an elementary school teacher and have been teaching for over nine years. I'm experiencing that teacher burnout and have been searching for something else. But I have a lot of worries that come with leaving and moving on from what I know and feel confident doing. The unknowns of a move scare me a lot more than I would like to admit. And I think it prevents me from being all in on a career jump. My husband is in the army and we moved to a city a few years ago for his job. This move was extremely hard for me as I didn't know anyone when we moved here, and I'm often alone when he has to go away for missions. It's taken me a long time to gain friendships and a sense of community again. Am I just like so robotic when <laughs> yeah, I read? A little bit. <laughs> it's just like, it's like it's fine. How do you You're like? How it. do you fluid motion read out loud? I, I never just, realized like how hard it was to like read out but loud. But I read books, so like when I read, <laughs> I a, read books. But yeah, but like I read, so like when I'm reading books, I'm reading it in like a. But I, when I read to myself, I'm fine. But just like out loud is such a different. The one thing holding but me in my current career really is my coworkers. I have an amazing team and I'm so thankful for them all. Yeah. This makes it hard to make the career move, even though my job is so stressful. I worry I'll be right back where I started socially if I leave. I know you have talked about career moves and even moving to a new city and was wondering what advice you have. Did you have doubts? How did you handle those emotions and losing relationships in the process? Wow, that was better. We can like find a happy medium somewhere in there. It's I'm gonna either take, I'm gonna boom take the rest of boom. the questions, but John, <laughs> we're gonna work on it. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. We I'm just, just have to find a happy place. Um yeah, let's let's cheers to that. Okay, so I'm gonna just um, cliff note. Teacher burning out. She's kind of ready to move on to something else. Got it. The question is, you know, she wants to do something new, but she like how did how did we do new things? Um, it's gonna be hard for her. I know it's gonna be hard because she's doing it on her own, right? Her husband's gone on missions, and you know. I could see that being tough because you don't have a partner. Also, she loves her coworkers. So that's like the, the tough thing too. So after grazing this question and hearing John's fabulous read, I think that it is very easy to stay in a career because you're comfortable. It's very easy to stay in anything because you're comfortable. Even though you like you're burning out and you have that longing to do something, it's scary to want to like do something different, do something new, especially when you've already like formed relationships in what you're currently doing, but you cannot stay in a place for other people. If you do not move on to like what your soul is calling you to do and like what you feel, you wouldn't have this feeling if it wasn't meant for you. Like if you, if you were meant to stay in this career, you, I, I don't think that you would be feeling this way. Um, if you have this, if you inkling, have an itch, to, yeah, just you, you would regret it if you don't pursue it. And I totally understand. Number one, like the, the um, stress, the unknown, the the disappointing other people that you've built these connections with, doing what you're doing. But your future self will thank you. And again, I always say this when. I look at like where what we've done and when we've taken these jumps is I'm so thankful when we did it and I'm so glad, but I'm like, I can't believe that I didn't do that sooner. Like it seems so much scarier 
than it actually is. Um, it's just starting and doing. But I think also if those are real connections and real friendships, like they'll follow you through your life. And they'll support you. They'll yeah. be so excited for you. Moving to a new city can be hard. You do have to put yourself out there more, but it's not unheard of. People do it all the time. And again, in the world that we live in today, technology makes it so much easier to stay connected with your other friends. Nothing nothing is wrong with growing and experiencing new things and doing new things. It's just going to make you like more confident in yourself and just make you better. Mm -hmm. So if you have an, an itch to do something else, like act on it. And I think too, like the question that John and I always ask ourselves, if like we're thinking of doing something, we're, we're like, would we regret it if we don't? And if the answer is yes, like we're like, all right, then let's figure it out. Let's do it. And that way, and again, I think it, a lot of it probably has to do with like the career that you worked in prior, like working with people who were literally on their deathbed, having these conversations and You're having like, I regrets. wish I did this. Yeah. I wish I did that. And so and like, like, we just didn't want to ever look back and be like, oh, we should have, we should have done this. We should have started our own business. We should have moved to LA. We should have, you know, there's so many what ifs. But that's like the beauty of it. You definitely have to have, you know, certain ducks in a row to you do it. You do things in steps too. It doesn't have to be all at once. I mean, a job is one thing, like getting a, a new job. But to try new things, like it's not like you don't have to take a massive dive into something, mm -hmm. you know, just like start slow, like just right. start researching things. Exactly. Or in your free time that, you know, you're scrolling on phone at, your phone at night look up like what it what it is that you want to pursue or start like maybe you can volunteer in some like in the realm of what you want to do i don't know like there's a lot of things you could do to like test the waters first mm -hmm. yeah but if you're already feeling like you want to move on to something i think that you will be unhappy with yourself if you don't pursue this so good luck and you got this Last question. <laughs> All right, Alex and John, I think I'm beginning to feel resentment towards my partner and I hate it. My boyfriend and I met five years ago in my hometown and we spent a few years there together before deciding to make a, mu a move a few states over. At the time of our move, I was working towards a degree in the medical field. I really loved my school. I was excited to train at our level one trauma center and I had a strong support group that included close friends and my adoptive family that took me in during my teen years. Making the decision to move was extremely difficult and emotional for me as I struggled to leave behind all the things that I loved. However, this town was very small and I also felt that it would be good for me to, to have new experiences and step outside of my comfort zone. My partner, on the other hand, couldn't wait to move. He ended up in my area due to a military assignment and hadn't been there for very long. So once his contract was up, he was ready to move on. Once we settled in our new town, he started school for his trade and I started looking for new schools as well. He has since graduated and settled into a new career that he loves and makes good money, but we've run into several snags along the way. In the past year, we've accumulated debt after a business partner of his skipped town with thousands of dollars. We have hired a lawyer to help us navigate this, which is also contributing to debt. We lost our rental house after our landlord died, and we've had to move in with my sister and her husband until we are back on our feet financially, which has been very stressful in of itself. I'm working part-time now due to... I'm working part-time now due to school, so we can't start looking for houses until everything is settled. I'm struggling to stay positive with everything going on, and the built-up stress surrounding all these events has caused a, notable, a noticeable strain in our relationship. I have found myself comparing everything to home and sometimes wishing that we stayed. I have also struggled to find a solid group of friends that I want to spend time with outside of work and school. We are both just so focused on work, school, and digging ourselves out of this hole that we fell in when we moved, that there isn't any time for things we used to enjoy, and it's really wearing on me, especially now that we're not in our own space anymore. He has recently told me that he doesn't feel loved by me anymore, and it broke my heart, because I really do love him. But I could definitely see how my attitude towards him in general has shifted since we have moved. I don't want to bring the situation down any further. What the heck should I do? Any tips on making this new place feel more like home so I'm not such an asshole? It's like... That's tough. I, that's that sucks. So like a string of bad luck, basically, with things. Is there like a financial advisor? Not a financial advisor, but a like a debt. Somebody that can like assist with like debt. Um, the thing is, like, 
I I don't want you Consol- to get this- consolidating debt. That's what I was trying to say. Like, oh, that's the first thing you guys need to do because that's going to take a lot of weight off of your shoulders. Of like, you have a lot of debt that you're going to have to dig out of well, first. You don't know like how much it is. But, I mean, again, like, but that's the what's lawyer. contributing to like stress. No, but and- also like living somewhere else, not living, having your own space, like. For us, what's like, the number one thing though that they need to do so they can not live with his sister is get out from under debt so they can get their own place. That's the number one thing. Like right now, like you're in a bind. There's nowhere you can go because I'm assuming you can't financially afford a place on your own because of the debt that you have. So you need to consolidate your debt, whether it's credit cards, put them together, whatever you have to do. I don't agree with that. I what? wouldn't say like getting credit cards. I just think that no, like. No, no, no. I'm not saying get credit cards. I'm saying. If you have accumulated debt on credit cards, I'm giving examples like consolidating them and like talking to a financial advisor or whatever to like help you get out of the hole that you're in because that is what's affecting your relationship, which it, it is. Like she hasn't made any friends, but that's a priority. Like you're living in someone else's home, like, and you are so used to being on your own with your partner. Like that takes a toll. We know that. Well, I was just going to say, like, I know that this. It feels like you can't see the end of the tunnel, but we've been here before, both John and I, like we've both lived on our own when we were living, like when we had first met, we like had, we were financially stable. We had our own places. And then when we wanted to live with each other in New York, New York's fucking expensive. So we had to live with my grandma. And so that was tough. I mean, she had a space for us, but like for a while we were just living in like a spare room and it was taking a toll, I think, on our relationship because you were working in a job that you hated. We were just trying to like put together, save all the dollars that we can. I was just starting the film business. And so I was making zero dollars, like spending more money, just going into debt you, is not a good thing. And like it, it adds stress to you. So that's like one thing. How can you change like what you're doing now to, to, spend less money. Like right now you're staying with your family, which is going to be great. Like the amount of money that we were able to save when we lived with family was huge. That's why we were able to buy our first house. Um, my point here is just saying that I know that it feels like you're drowning. I know that it feels like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's there. You just have to stay focused. So fucking, no, you have to stay focused but stay positive and stay focused and know that you guys have a goal. You have an end goal in mind. And I think by, by reminding you and your partner of that, of what it is, it it is going to be your lifeboat in your relationship by being like, this sucks right now, but like, this is what we're working towards. That is so true. Honestly, beat it into the ground too. We talked, we talked about it all the time because that's what was on our mind. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just another, whatever. Yeah. Some like, Another year. Like we worked seven days a week and we were burnt the fuck out. Like because we were working so many hours. Like But the thing is we were on the same page and I think her, they are too. They are too. It's just like your love does come first. Like you need to talk to him and be like, no, I truly do love you. Tell him how you feel though. Like what's going on? Like this is a lot on you. I'm sure it's a lot on him too. Like you guys have had a bumpy road right now. But I think that that's what helped us. Having the same goal though and talking about it. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that that's like ultimately what got us through was like making sure that it wasn't me versus you. You weren't letting me struggle alone. I wasn't letting you struggle alone. It was like, we're doing this together. And through this, it's only going to build us and like, just make us more of a unit, like more, a better team. And then like, when you do get out on the other side, like you're just going to be stronger together. So communicate how you're feeling because he's, he probably doesn't know where you're at. Like if he said that you feel like you're, you don't love him anymore or what was it that he doesn't um, feel like you don't, you don't feel like yeah. you, you're he's loved by you. Then you just, this is where you have to be intentional with like what you guys are doing together, your words. And if he's a words of affirmation person, cause that's like how you were. Yeah. I felt like, like when we were in such stressful times in our lives, it was really tough on our relationship, but like the only way that we got through was communicating and just being like, we got this, like we could do it. You're at a very crucial point where communication is huge. And Mm -hmm. we resonate with this question. I know. Like after reading this, I was like, this was us. Like we were, and for a while we were like, just with family in the spare bedrooms and just sharing kitchens. And like, you just feel like, There's nothing like having your own space, like crashing on your own couch, like just chilling in your own kitchen. Just you have to put like a face on. It's just a two. Yeah, Yeah. and like 
you're, I'm sure you're so grateful for the family who's helping you out. And that's not saying you're not, but it's still just like stressful living with other people. Um, well, I feel, I'm sure you feel like you're taking a step back, which mm -hmm. is tough. Yeah. But this is something where you guys have to rely on each other. Just this is the time to work, though. This is the time to not go partying, not spend money on like stupid fucking shit. Don't go on. Do do affordable vacations if you really need a getaway. But you, this isn't the time to like live lavishly. You know, you need to save your money. You could you could go. You're like <laughs> save your money, get down on that debt and then you'll be fine. <laughs> I would just say, really remember this time yeah. too. This will be such a pivotal point in your relationship. And when you guys come out of this, you're going to come out so much stronger and know what you as a couple can handle together. Because our our most stressful year that we've had, like I constantly look at that and be like, I know what our threshold is. Right. Like, and I know what we can do together. And like I will take that experience till the grave with me. Because mm -hmm. it's just like, it's motivating to me right. too. So don't look at this completely as a negative thing mm -hmm. either. Good luck. You got this. You guys got this. Okay. Bonus question, John? Bonus question. I know. This was a long one. We had lots of long questions here. Okay. Is the bonus question a long question? It's a, it's a short one. Okay. What are your biggest gym icks? Hoping I'm not the only one who hopes the um, person taking up three machines at once would somehow get struck with a bolt of gonorrhea. Wow. I wouldn't say that last part, but <laughs> man, that's so weird. That literally just happened to us. Yeah. Like, did you write this question? No. Yeah, right. Did I write it's just happened in. to us like two hours ago. And of course it was like two, uh, not of course it was two women, but like <laughs> now I feel bad because I wanted Alex to say something, but I did. I was like so annoyed. Like it was two women and they had the squat rack and it's gym's pack squat rack and the hip thrust. And we get in there. I'm like, oh, are you using this? Like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So then Alex and I literally went did two machines and then found another squat rack and did five so sets between 40, two of us. 40 minutes. 40 like minutes. And they're things. still on it. It's because they're talking. Of course. And then I went to go say something. I was like walking over and then I guess one of them was like crying to her friend. I'm like, oh God, I guess I won't so say anything now. So then I waited and then I came back and she's like, no, I still have another set. I'm like, mother it's just, fucker. For me, it's just when like there's not like the gym is packed. My gym ick is not being aware about your time on a machine. Like, no, you can't have access to all these three fucking machines. It's so selfish. It's so selfish, especially when it's like, I'm. how am I able to do five sets of something on 18 different machines in the time that you're, you've still been on one? I don't get it. Lock it up. It's just... <laughs> It's just like, yeah, be Otherwise, it's aware. really my only gym ick. I don't have many gym icks except just like people hogging shit. Or if you're like on your phone, just chilling on the machine. I'm like, dude, right. get the fuck Talking, on. chilling. Just like if you're working out on it, fine. Like I don't give a shit. But like if you've been on it for 40 minutes and you have a five minute break between every set, yeah, that's, you're, that's you are bullshit. an asshole. Or just let other people use the machine too. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> It's, I'm getting it, like angry. It, it just triggered us because it just happened. It to just us. happened. I was like, oh my God, they've been on it for an hour. I feel like I was kind of a dick because I, because <laughs> she was like, I went over to the one friend. I'm like, hey, you guys. And the one woman was like, I have one more set. I go, she's like, I just have one more set. I'm like, okay. Like, I just like ignored her. I was like, dude, whatever. <laughs> like, I wanted her to see that I was annoyed. That was very childish to me that I'm thinking about it. But at the same time, like, I need you to know how disrespectful that is that you, you've just been. I don't. On the people, same machine for 40 minutes. 40 minutes? 40 minutes. I don't think people know, you know? I don't know. Or we just have to go to a bigger gym. I don't know. That's the thing with LA. I don't think there's like, a, there's not a ton of gyms. It's not like a big gym scene, I, I don't think. I mean, the one we go to is like the only one near us. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> What's your ick, John? What's your main ick, not your gym ick? You know exactly what my ick is. <clears throat> it's not about you though. It's not? No. Wow. My ick is what happened yesterday in the parking lot. Alex and I, oh. like we go, where we go, it's like there's shops, there's a gym and there's some shops and stuff. We go in and there's no parking and we're just making laps, making laps for like 10 minutes. And then I find, I see this one chick is getting in her car to get out, but then like two cars down, there's another woman like getting in her car. So I'm waiting for the first one and she's like, 
doing her GPS. She's about to back out. And the woman two cars down has like coffee cups and my window's down. And she's like putting them inside her car. She goes, I'm not leaving. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I was like, well, I'm not looking. And she cuts me off. She goes, I'm not leaving. And I just like snapped. I was like, I'm not even looking at you. Like, I'm not even looking at you. And I was just like, uh, you were not waiting for her car. It like triggered. I wasn't even cold. We weren't even close to no, her car. No. We were like five cars down. I hope she hears this. I wish she knew who we are and heard this. I think it was just like being in a parking lot at that time I'm not, is stressful. I'm not leaving. I'm like, I'm not even looking at you. We're not even talking to you. We're not even near you. I thought Alex was going to fight her. I loved it. I was like, I will no. watch you. I'm just trying to keep my pummel zen. her. But yeah, no, I was just like, who? Do I follow her into Air One? <laughs> just <laughs> dump one of those eight, those fifteen dollars bottles of water over her like, head. Like again, I don't, I don't know. I, I do think that like people waiting for cars can be assholes. Like, don't honk at me while I'm getting in my car. I'm backing right. up. You know what I mean? Like, let me take my time. But like the fact that we weren't waiting for her car, she was just assuming. And when you assume shit, you know what they say? You're making an You're asshole. You're dickhead. That too. Okay, but my ick for you, which I'm shocked that you didn't have one for me, is um, when you ask where something is, I tell you, and then, okay, just don't make this face. When, you, when you're like, okay, for example, the rolling pin, you were like, Alex, where's the rolling pin? And I go, it's in the drawer in front of you. You open- I was moving. And listen, so there's a top drawer, a middle draw, drawer, and a bottom drawer. You open the top drawer, which is our junk drawer, and you go, no, it's not in here. Instead of going to the second drawer or the third, you start opening cabinets everywhere else. And you're like, Alex, it's not in there. And I'm just chopping on onions. I'm like, I'm not going to say shit because. So you're just going to trigger me and just, How just fuck it. You? Use your critical thinking skills and know, oh, if it's not in the top drawer, she, she said the drawer in front of me, it's obviously the one in front of my dick. You like, have you the audacity to talk about this as your ick when we were going to make a TikTok about it because Alex, I could be like, I hey, Alex, detailed. where's. The scissors. And she'd be like, it's in the drawer. <laughs> she doesn't even know where I am. She's putting makeup on in her room or something. Like the amount of times like I've asked her where stuff is, she's like, it's in the drawer. Okay. Over there. I know. Not even looking. In a, you're in a I different room. I know that, but I was be very- specific. But I was specific. I said the drawer that you're standing in front of. My rebuttal is when I said, where is it? I was turning. Oh my God. I, I wasn't just standing in front of So I was look. turning. I'm like, where's the, the rolling pin? Like but you, you checked, so I started opening but you drawers. checked the first drawer that you were standing in front of. And Just then, so you know, I checked that drawer three, the same drawer three times because I was like, am I crazy? No, but John, like there were three other drawers in front of you. There are massive drawers where bowls are. How did I know the fucking rolling pin was in there? Because I told you that's where it was. Because I told you. The fact that you just kept cutting shit and like, because I You're hear like, you, and I'm, I'm like, you purposely, Why have a fight? Why don't you just fucking tell me exactly what it is? It because if I told you, I would have said it angrily, and I was like, he's, you do it on purpose. You're I do it on purpose. Up, Why would up, I want to sit there for 20 minutes and look where it is? You're opening other cabinet, be like, where is it? Like, I told you, it was the drawer that you were standing in front of. It's obviously one of the three, and I could have been, it's in the middle drawer that you're standing this in front of. Typical, but Alex, read, John, my, read my you, mind. Read my mind. Read my mind. You could have came more, if you didn't want to tell me. Use your critical thinking You should have just walked over. And open the fucking drawer. No, for I was like, he'll find himself, and then what? I guess you'll what? I never didn't. forget where it is. You don't put anything away in the right That's, spot, John. It's, you put that away, and I knew where that was. I don't use a rolling pin. You <laughs> use a rolling pin, so why should I fucking know where it is? But I still did know. You go, where is it? I don't use it. You use it, but somehow I'm supposed to know where You're it is. You're so full of shit. Me, John. When I used it, you fucking use it. Right, riddle me that, bitch. <laughs> I can't believe the the main point of this is like you knew exactly where it was and you saw that I was struggling no, and no, you no, still no, made John, it a point you were to not tell me you were pretending to, to not struggle. 
make were, it worse. You were pretending to struggle. I know that you were Alex, specifically. You're right. I was pretending for seven were. minutes looking for the you fucking rolling pin while I was trying to roll out the dough. Weaponized incompetence. You were like, "Where is it?" And then you're, and then you have the audacity. If it was like, weaponized incompetence, I would have stopped. I'd be like, "Well, you could roll the dough," but it wasn't. No, I kept that's looking. Not weaponized incompetence. Weaponized incompetence is you being like, "You told me where it is, but not specifically." So, I know. So it now I'm gonna look in the garage. I'm gonna look under the bed. Alex, where is it? I wasn't trying to prove a point. I literally did not know where it was. Weaponizing incompetence is like, oh, I don't know where the rolling pin is. I guess you have to roll out the pizza. No, that's not it. Yeah, that is. It's I don't know where it is. You have to be the one to find it, even though you're the one who fucking uses or the rolling Or it's like, pin. I don't know where it is. Guess I'll wait till you find it for me. No, I kept looking for but it. But I told you exactly You're not saying weaponizing was. incompetence, right? No. I hope so many people respond to this because that's not weaponizing incompetence when I kept looking for but it. But you're pretending like you don't know where it How is. How the fuck was I <laughs> pretending? I kept looking for it for seven minutes. I was that committed to proving a point? Yeah. No. You were pretending because I told you where it was. I told you it was the li- in the line of drawers in front of you. So by you pretending that you didn't know where it was, that's weaponized incompetence because you're you're acting incompetent. You're acting like, I don't know where it is, even though I told you exactly where it was and it was in the middle drawer. That's you. This is why no one likes you. <laughs> me? Me? This is why no one likes you, John. Team, hashtag Team Alex. <laughs> hashtag we came out stronger as a as a couple from our year of uh, despair. Yeah, exactly. This is the things that we banter about now. Not money, but where the, where fuck the fucking things. rolling pin was. Again, but you're the... I hate that rolling pin, the by the way. Man. Then buy we, a new we one, need, John. We need a different one because you can't even like get your hands around it to roll. You know what it you is, to, like, too? I think it's like our counters. I think they just we got to redo it. So I think we that should... That has just, nothing to I do with the should, rolling pin. we should renovate the whole kitchen. Are we done? No, I have one more ick, and it's it's a funny one though. It's funny, and you know exactly what I'm gonna say. So it's, I'll just say it. It's morning time. No, I need to quote it. It's morning time, and we're just. I don't think we're getting ready for anything. It's not morning time. John, it happened four hours no, ago. John just finished playing. We just did the sword <laughs> Oculus game, and John turns at me. He has his buzzer in his hand, and he goes. I'm going to go find a secluded place. to. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to go find a secluded place to trim my pubes outside. Yeah. Excuse me. You want to know why? <laughs> I didn't want to make a mess. <laughs> so I go outside and I see John's bare ass <laughs> next to the truck. <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening? It's been a while. I had to clean up, and I just did not want to clean it up inside. So have it's, you done it's gonna be fertilizer. Have you done that before? I did my face outside before. This is my first. There's a lot I had to get rid of. <laughs> I had to do damage control outside. John, and you were not in a secluded place. I don't want to have to. Our neighbors vacuum. could have seen you. Your dick was Alex, just out. No one could see you, me. No, we're, John, we live in a jungle. Someone, your dick was out. You're at your. Bushy ass, anyone could have seen you. Whatever. I literally from the house was able to Snapchat and I got your... Let me see. You want to see? Yeah. You don't believe me? All right. Show me. Show me. Why are you taking fucking videos of me? I don't take videos of you. To show you that you weren't in a secluded place. I didn't send it to anyone. Let me see. It's for my memories. (laughs) I don't like that it looks like I'm flexing my cheeks up high. Like, what am I doing? Like, it's just, it's just, my cheeks look so tight. You're, you're bending over to see. And like, oh my God, I was dying. I just like thought all, that you were all joking. For you. All for you. For me? Well, also we're going, we're going like to the beach here in like a week. So John, you're going to have to retrim. I went to clean up. No, I don't want to retrim. I do like, you know, once in a while, just clean it up a little bit. You're going to have to retrim. <laughs> On that note, guys, that note. thank you so much for <laughs> tuning in today to give it to me straight. We hope you enjoyed. Please leave reviews. If like, you're subscribe, our episodes. email. Oh, read a review real quick. Oh yeah. Let's read a review guys. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. That was funny. I like this one. It's the most recent one. It's called 
Let Alex speak, LOL. Great show, very funny and authentic. Just gets annoying how much John interrupts Alex slash doesn't let her finish her thought. She's he's she still gave us five stars. Thank you. <laughs> That's how do such you feel, a lie. Tom? That's such a lie. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into our episode. If you want to find us, we are at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com. That's our email. But if you want to find us on social media, we're at give it to me straight podcast pretty much everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. That's it. Guys, love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And we will see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.